Eleven days after the Bacchanor party, and after an eight-hour peyote vision quest, Eligio whimpered and groaned for a while, then began to snore. Don Juan covered him with some burlap sacks. It was 5.35 a.m. Don Juan and I sat quiet for a long time. He seemed to be tired. I broke the silence and asked him about Eligio. He told me that Eligio's encounter with Mescalito had been exceptionally successful. Mescalito had taught him a song the first time they met, and that was indeed extraordinary. Don Juan did not speak for a long time. He seemed to be engulfed in thoughts. My setup was for Lucio, and I found Eligio instead. I knew it was useless, but when we like someone, we should properly insist, as though it were possible to remake men. Lucio had courage when he was a little boy, and then he lost it along the way. Can you bewitch him, Don Juan? Bewitch him? For what? So he will change and regain his courage. You don't bewitch for courage. Courage is something personal. Bewitching is for rendering people harmless or sick or dumb. You don't bewitch to make warriors. To be a warrior, you have to be crystal clear, like Eligio. There, you have a man of courage. Isn't there anything you can do, Don Juan? No. Unfortunately, there is no way to make bones for a jellyfish. It was only my folly. You've told me time and time again, Don Juan, that a sorcerer cannot have follies. I've never thought you could have any. Don Juan looked at me piercingly. He got up, glanced at Eligio, and then at Lucio. He tucked his hat on his head, patting it on the top. It's possible to insist, to properly insist, even though we know what we're doing is useless, he said, smiling. But we must know first that her acts are useless, and yet we must proceed as if we didn't know it. That's a sorcerer's controlled folly.